Dyson Logistics have been on board with Shark Car since day one, and because of that and their excellent service, we are proud to be associated with them. Dyson Logistics provides tailored logistical solutions to meet your individual client needs and is set apart by its personalized service. Dyson is a strong worldwide agent network, enabling highly competitive rates, and I should also point out their head honcho is a lifelong season ticket holder of the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. Find them online, www.dysonlogistics.com, or call them on 02 8339 Dyson Logistics, service delivered. 50 years, and Cronulla has their first title. The Royal Motor Yacht Club Port Hacking is a hidden gem of the Shire, situated on the banks of the beautiful Port Hacking. It's a great place to catch up with friends, celebrate your birthday or any special occasion, and they always show the NRL live on the big screens. The RMYC Port Hacking, proud sponsors of this podcast and big supporters of the Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. Check out their website, rmycph.com.au. They've got a Facebook page, or you could go old school and call them on 02 9523 9300. Hey there, welcome to Sharkcast Pod, a podcast dedicated to the greatest sporting club in the history of the world, the mighty Cronulla Sutherland Sharks. This show is brought to you by Dyson Logistics, the Royal Motor Yacht Club, in Port Hacking, and Jason Hawes at Crips and Crips Real Estate. My name is Sam Shinazian, OG from 2015. I've run out of things to say. Already? Already. How's the show going to go on? But I have got with me and with us one of the greats of all time. One of the goats. Stop it. He, <laughs> I haven't started. <laughs> he is fresh from a Taylor Swift concert. He is the head of how the sharks look these days. Design, socials, webs, all that kind of stuff. Sorry for the lame intro. This is my w- worst intro ever. Usually you people are like, best intro ever. No, it's still a great intro. Gary Dover, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Good to be back. Happy to be here. Ready to go. We're almost there. Start of the official NRL season. Yes. We are a bit over 10 days away. Taylor Swift. Amazing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You know exactly what it was like. It was deafening, to yeah. say the least. Yeah. But um, that level of performance for that long... With that many people, it's always going to be a great show. And yeah, probably one of the best shows I've been to. Just hit after hit. Oh, constantly. Uh, the thing I liked most was there was no going through the motions. It was like it yeah. was a, her last show ever. Performance was unbelievable. She doesn't miss a beat. She's no. just on for three and a half hours. And I've never been in an environment, and it probably just says a lot about the environments I hang out in, <laughs> that has been that inclusive yeah. and that kind. Yeah, that's a good way to put it, actually. And the way, like, even those LED bracelets that everyone gets, the way that just, like, lights up the stadium, there's different things going on here and there. Everyone's into it. Everyone's friendly. Sharing friendship bracelets. I obviously didn't have one on, but my daughter did. She had plenty. Yeah. And a lady walked past and said, look, you're missing something, and handed me one, and I was forever grateful. I I was in the same boat pretty early on into sitting down. Uh, Someone gave me one, and I was just... Overwhelmed. I was like, yeah. I haven't got one back. I know. That's matter. what I felt bad, but she was happy for me to have one. She had them all the way up to her elbow, so I'm sure she could spare one. And I appreciate her. The offer. police were getting given them, the security guards. It was Everyone's into it, aren't they? Really beautiful. Yeah, I, it was I, nice. I was overwhelmed by, yeah, how kind everyone was. Yeah, that's, a, that's inclusive, exactly what you yeah. said before. It was just unreal, yeah. Especially when you're going there with kids. Like, my kids obviously loved it, and yeah. to see the way they're treated by people there was just like, Whatever they needed, they got, and it was unreal. Yes, it was a fantastic experience. I'm sure some of our listeners also made it out there, but I did also feel very grateful that I was one of the inadvertent commas few few to get a ticket. Obviously, a lot yes. of people went, but a lot of people didn't get to go, so it was really special. Uh, you were mentioning music before as well. You were talking about Dylan Wright. Yes, I was saying it's a hard act to follow coming up after Dylan Wright. I haven't had the pleasure of meeting him yet, and my voice isn't as good, but if one day he's down at 
uh, Shark Park. I'd like to bump into him and have a good chat because he's a good bloke with a great voice and really loving what he's doing on Australian Idol. I think the chances are pretty good he's going to come. I, well, show. I see him all the time. He's always there with Wade and like, yeah, I've, I've been in the room with him a few times but never had the pleasure of a conversation. So, yeah, he's a good Dylan, boy. if you're listening, he's listening. come say hi. He's a listener and he's a great I'll fella. come say hi. He was on the show a few episodes ago. If you yes. haven't heard, there's a YouTube video as well. We went all out for him. And in between talking to him and now... He sang a version of "Don't Tell Me, Gary," five hundred miles by the Proclaimers, yes, as a party song, and it was so lights out. He went to straight straight into the next week. He's straight in. He's unreal. He's absolutely unreal, and I encourage anyone who hasn't seen it to go out there and watch it because oh. yeah, unbelievable. I got I got the gooseies as they say. <laughs> the gooseies. We are already getting mail saying enough of the rock and roll. Let's talk about footy. Rock you know on. what I say to those people? <laughs> Rock <laughs> I can't on. say what I want to say to those people. No, just kidding. It's footy time. It is. You are on here because we love you and because the seven other guys couldn't do it. Oh, joke, slack. joke, joke, no, joke, that's joke. Fine. I can handle it. You are the closest person we have to the club, which is wonderful. And we'll get a bit of insight to how we're looking, how we're traveling on and yep. off the field. Uh, but. Let's start with the trials. Now, you were at Taylor Swift as a spoiler. You, you weren't Bulldogs trial in the house. Missed, yes. I know you've seen a lot of the... Uh... You know, there's a lot to work on heading into round one. Nico brings a lot when he's back there and there's a few different combinations and a few guys getting rested. I don't think Fitzy and the coaching staff wanted to play all their cards when we're playing them in round two. Mm. So, Good yeah, point. I think maybe people can expect a lot more come round one, round two. That's a really good point. Because we do play them in round two at home. Yeah. Uh, Canterbury played, honestly, I said this on the review, like it was their grand final. And yeah. I'm not disrespecting them. It's good to have that intensity. We didn't have it, but I didn't have a problem with that. Uh, we saw some injuries coming out of the game. Yep. We do have uh, young Jesse Calhoun recently re-signed. Hurt his foot. Uh, we're going to wait on your release, which hasn't come out yet. I dare say it will probably be out by the time... This podcast comes we, out. We can't risk our stuff, Gary. <laughs> no, we we've, don't know. We've had the wrath of the Sharks before. We yes. don't want to do that again. Yeah. It's a serious injury. It's looking like he'll be spending some time on the sidelines, unfortunately. Yeah, so check your your socials and your website for that. But uh, Jesse out for a while. Foot injury. Nico missed the game. We believe he's going to be okay. Precautionary, yeah. yeah. Long season ahead, obviously. And he had that All-Stars match. Felt a bit of tightness and they didn't want to risk him. So he'll be good to go. I did hear another... Rumor whisper that K Dykes aggravated a hamstring, so we'll wait and see on that one. Yep. He may not be ready for round one, so that Which may... be a terrible shame after everything he's been through, but... Nothing yeah. serious, we don't think, but no. it's a couple of weeks. Well, these hamstrings can take a couple of weeks, so we'll see what happens. Wait for the official release as well, but keep your eye on, on Gary's socials because there will be news coming on that at some point. However, everyone else kind of got through it okay. Yeah. And it does weigh up a few things for round one selections, which we'll get to. Who do you think in the two trial matches put their name down for a great preseason? One guy who's impressed me this whole preseason and probably over the last two trials as well is Oregon Kafusi. Mm. He's come back in really good nick and you can tell he's really, I guess, focused on getting himself right, getting in shape, knowing his role and doing exactly what he needs to do. Him and Royce Hunt, I think, have stepped up a, a level. And I'm interested to see that translate into the regular season. Obviously, with Braden out for a little bit and Toby nursing that sore toe, he's obviously not at 100%. So to have two guys like Oregon and, and Royce out there just ripping in, it's, yeah, they've probably been two of the guys who impressed me most this preseason. Uh, this time next week, they'll be in contention for starting the game. Absolutely. Based on what we've seen and given the fact we're down one or two guys. Yep. Uh, which is great to have that depth. Uh, Oregon came back with a full head of hair. There's it's pe- luscious, people isn't it? Are, it's luscious. People are saying that's the secret behind his newfound form, and I'm happy to go with that. Uh, I love the offload he's got. Yes. I don't. I think I remember that from last year, but we didn't see it too many times. So I think we saw it a bit more when he was at Para, but yeah, mm. it probably went missing last year, but he's definitely been focusing on a lot of areas of his game, and it's good to see them coming to fruition, especially in those two trials. Gary, another guy that caught my eye was uh, Chris Vaella. Yes. He's having a really good preseason, and in the two games, he was lights out. Yeah. What so can you tell me? A young kid out there, ripping in, trying his best. He's um, come from the Newcastle system, as you said, and 
you know, these trials are the, the opportunity that those boys get to really put their best foot forward and he's snatched that opportunity that he's gotten and he's been playing really well. He's had a good preseason. There's obviously been a few camps and a few different uh, things that the boys have done in terms of sand hills and army camps and things mm. like this and he's always put his hand up and been one of the front runners so it's good to see his hard work pay off in the trials. He seems like a confident lad. Is that how he portrays himself at training or? He's actually really quiet. Yeah. So, yeah, he's not as, you know, flamboyant or in your face as people might think cool but yeah he's obviously got confidence in himself as they all do at that level and yeah he's um he's a good young fella now we're not going to go into too much detail but i heard some great stories about the uh, army camps and the the boot camps that they had in the off season (laughs) yeah uh suffice to say they were brutal yes they were very i know you saw some of them too i saw a couple of them i've never been in a position even behind the camera where i was like this is actually crazy Mm. this is crazy so it was good to see the boys are actually ripping in and yeah really really going hard some of them involved sleep outs and getting up at all sorts of times of the day and it was mind games when i heard when i heard about it i was like ah this is not different but like it's it's actually impressive like i'm i would never do it in my life yeah obviously yeah but it's good to see they're thinking a little bit outside the circle the coaching staff and definitely and it's um you know, it's something that when you're on the field, you need to perform under fatigue. And that was like a big focus that I'm sure every team focuses on come preseason, but yeah. they want to put themselves in those positions where they need to make decisions under fatigue. And yeah, to see what they were doing and the puzzles and things that they had to solve after doing 50 million sand hills, it's just oh. Oh, it's brutal. Okay. How has Fitzy and the coaching staff been? Are they, are they, we heard Fitzy on the show earlier yep. in the year, but are they great episode, by the way? Are they primed? Yes. Mm. I'm feeling really, really good about the Me season too. ahead Me too. i mean i feel good about the season ahead every year when it gets to this time but this is probably a little bit more than others i think you know we probably had some disappointing ends to the last two years Definitely. and fitzy's start as coach and they're the things that we want to rectify and you know a lot of people have said you just haven't changed your team there's nothing mm. to be excited about but i think it's total opposite we've got a bit of cohesion everyone's gelling everyone knows what everyone brings to the table and you know we're we're playing on people's strengths and ironing out those weaknesses as much as we can. If the team can stay fit, mm. I'm super confident of doing something special. Now, if they can't stay fit, there are guys to come up who've had more experience, yep. guys that we haven't seen at a lower level that can come up as well. But if they can stay fit, like I hear things on the radio or whatever, and it's like, how can they make the next jump? How can they go further? It's like, well, we can start by finishing the top four by having our halfback play more games. And our fullback played more games. Yeah. I think people forget that Will was out for as long as he was oh. and the actual impact that he has on our backline shapes and everything that we yeah. do. And yeah, having him back and fit and playing most games will be a big boost for us for sure. Yeah. And we, we're all hoping to goodness Nico starts the year this year, but last year he missed two, three, four games. So yeah. there were reasons why we didn't finish higher. It doesn't explain the fade outs at the end of both years, although yeah. Will Kennedy has been missing, but there is a lot there that is different to the last two years. Even just Tricky's preseason, like we've spoken about on the show that many times, but to know you're coming in as the six and to actually sit there and rip in for a full preseason, knowing you're the guy, I think that makes a big difference. We saw it in the All-Stars match, how well they work together on both sides of the field, and I think it's something Sharks fans can be excited about. Tell me about uh, Braden this off-season. I haven't seen him up close this off-season. Yeah. We talked to him last year around the same time, and he was just super chilled, but like, confident within himself from the interview i did with him last year i got from it that he was ready to go when his time came yeah his time came later in the year did really well had the preseason man of the match the all-stars i thought the game against the dogs was hard to judge because there was no nico and he really had to do it all himself yeah how's he been around the place yeah he's been really good he's one of those kids that he's always ready but probably this year more so than usual you know he's younger on the younger side and having those preseason moments where you get four or five rounds in and you realize I'm not really getting the games that I want to get. Yeah. He might have switched off here and there, but this year he's just been lights out, focused on everything, working on every little part of his game. And he's just, yeah, he's such a solid kid in defense and he plays Mm. in the middle with passion. And yeah, I can't wait to see what he brings. I think people forget that he's younger than a lot of the other guys because he's been around the scene for a while now. He has been. But yeah, he's not even close to his prime, which is exciting. That's the best part for sure. Uh, what can you tell me about the King of Carring Bar? How's he going, Nico Hines? Nico's going well. Obviously, just that little quad strain yep. coming into the last trial, not so good. But How's you know, his preseason been? up until that point has been unreal. His leadership qualities and 
everything that he brings off the field is evident in every session that we do and everything that we do off the field. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to him stepping up. You know, he might not have been named captain, but he's got all those qualities and I'm really looking forward to how he uses them throughout the year. So good segue. I love a good segue. (laughs) We saw this week the announcement of Dale Finucane and Cam McInnes as co-captains. And uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe on the Christmas show, we were kind of wishing, or a bunch of us were kind of wishing for that. I don't know if you're allowed to wish for that (laughs) in your employment, but... Anyone can be captain. That came true and thoroughly deserved, like... He's been great since he came here, but he had such a good season last yeah, year. Yeah, massive season. Uh, he is, to me, what a captain's all about. And even off the field, like he speaks so passionately and so well about about all sorts of things. He's a role model uh, for players and for fans. He's just, from all we know about him, a good human on and off the field, like Dale. Yeah. And, and like all the guys, I'm not... But there was, a, there was a, a thought that Nico might get it, and a bunch of us were like... The dude's got too much on his plate. Let's yeah. Let's let him be the superstar because yeah. he is. He's our number one player. Let's not shirk around that. That's why he signed for hundred years, <laughs> and he's the face. He's the face. But he that's can, why this captaincy choice works as well because it allows him to just focus on his game and being yeah. the face and winning those games that we need to win. Yeah. Without all that extra pressure. And I have no doubt that he'll be amongst the huddle when the when either. Dale and Cam or just one of them or either like he's in everything yeah there's still a leadership group that he's a part of like he just doesn't have that responsibility because there is a lot of responsibility goes 100% with it. and you know every media session you guys hold everyone just flocks to him myself included like he's the go-to guy Nico you're the star yeah well you saw it on our socials at Belmore the lineup that he had just for photos of <laughs> people wearing that? all sorts of jerseys yeah. it was unreal so yeah I'm a Parramatta man I want a photo <laughs> with you but but to take away just that other stuff, the corporate stuff and and the extra responsibilities, yeah. I think it's just going to be good in the long run. And, and I'm sure that his time will come as well. Having Down said the that. track, he'll be a captain in our club yeah. for sure. But right now, just focus on the game and that's all we need from him. Now, can we confirm, not confirm, not sure, speculate? Do you reckon Cam teared up when he heard the news? I don't know. He's a pretty, like, guarded guy. He gets emotional, but not, like, yeah. in a way that he might cry in front of everyone. But he's very open and very honest about his feelings. And, yeah, I'm sure I'm he hoping he did. He, he would have been a, so proud to receive the honour, for sure. I'm trying to say it's a compliment to him that he's just such a, uh emotional guy. And it's... Yeah. yeah, the things that he said were exactly what I wanted to hear. It is a great privilege to be captain of, of this great club. And, uh, and let's not... Stop talking about Dale because Dale is awesome too, and he is clear captain material, and he's been doing a great job. That's what he was brought in for, right? Like the whole culture piece and everything yeah. that he brought to the table off the field and leadership on the field. So fascinating to see what Coach Fitz does with the two of them yes. on the field because yes. they play the same position. Now, our other Christmas wish was for Cam to start at lock. My wish was to play eighty minutes. Whether that happens or not, I don't know. What happens to Dale? Now we are short of some middles. Leading into the season, he's a middle. He can play the inverted commas prop position. Yes. Uh, so I wonder if we're going to see him either start at prop or come off the bench as prop, or if if it sort of sticks with what he knows and just gives Dale a fresh start and chance to secure that position. It's a hard one. It's I a hard one. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting team list come next Tuesday. It's yeah. just like I, even I'm not sure where he's going to land, and it's probably and even if know, he names it, we won't know until. Well, yeah, that's anyway. exactly right as well. So it's a good position to be in to have those options, yeah. but yeah. But it's a it's a serious chance that he's going to start at lock, in my opinion. Whether it's named or not, you know, you might not do it just to avoid any kind of controversy or whatever. Too much focus on that yeah. leading up to round one. But I think the bonus of Dale is that he can play as a middle, a, a more traditional prop, and he can either come off the bench or he can start the game, however you want to do it. But yeah. Uh, it's a good position to have for Fitz, um, but that was my immediate thought. Like, wow, he's picked two captains. They're both kind of our locks. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that maybe, that, maybe that'll be the case. Maybe McInnes will be on the bench and he'll just replace him. We'll soon find out, won't we? Not too far away from the season, so. We'll soon find out. We saw uh, Cam play some hooker. Yes. In the trial game. Uh, do you have any 
word on Blake. He's my boy Blake, all right. Yeah, he's fine. Apparently, I I messaged some people and yeah. I heard that he was off and not getting a run. And yeah, yeah, apparently he's fine. So okay. looking forward to him having a good year. Apparently, he was lights out leading into that moment where he got he taken off. So. He was. He doesn't need any. Any. It's a long season, right? And yeah. he's out there eighty minutes every game. So maybe maybe he he could like all of them use some time to gel into the new season. But he's yeah. fine. That's yeah. that's good news. That is good news. But it's good to see that Cam got some time there. He was a bit rusty from time to time, but he also did some good <laughs> stuff as well. There was some noticeable errors, but like, whatever. Like, if you haven't yeah. done something for a years. He hasn't done that for a while, so. But uh, everyone was like, whoa, I don't know if you're going to be a hooker. You can't pass the ball. <laughs> he can pass the ball. He can pass it perfectly fine. Errors. Selections are going to be interesting, Gary. Selections are going to be interesting. I think maybe some of the guys on the fringe are breathing a sigh of real leaf in a sense that a couple of the guys aren't going to be ready for round one gives yep. them more of a chance to kind of state their claim probably thinking of a guy like jack williams who i personally would have immediately in my 17 me too. when they're all fit sometimes he's sort of fringe and it's unfortunate colhoun won't be there because he would be in there i think he given... had such a good preseason and he was looking so good he in looked good both trials but i mean he, luckily he's signed with us uh he's part of the system we know the coach loves him yeah. And he'll be right. He'll be fine. Just these are setbacks and it'll make him tougher and he he will be back during the season, that we're sure of. Selection for the bench is gonna be interesting. Yeah, do, that do bench you carry is gonna be utility or not? Oh, that's the question, isn't it? Like obviously we know it? that Blake can do the job for eighty minutes if he's required and mm. Cam can slot in there if not. And do you carry four big guys or if yeah. they can move around a little bit exactly. if he needs to and So it's a it's a tough one and it's gonna be interesting to see where he lands, but Especially playing New Zealand in New Zealand round one, like it's a pretty big ask. So yeah, and I'm kind of thinking we might need some have four forwards on the bench big to boys, match him. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, interested to see how he goes or where he goes with that. And obviously our pack's not massive, but they can all do a job. And it'll be interesting to see. You know, is Jack Williams there? Is Tommy Hazelton there? Is it Royce and Oregon starting or Dale starting? Or I'll tell you what, Tall Tom impressed me. Yeah. He's had a great. There's not many as well. times he doesn't impress me, but he he's very consistent, isn't he? Yeah, but he was noticeably dominant. I remember Fitzy saying to me one time when he just started playing regularly, and he said he's always good. He always brings impact. He's always consistent. But mm. now the challenge for him is going to be doing that for longer periods of time. And yeah. you can see he's starting to get there, and it's really yeah. exciting because he can play those longer minutes now, and he still has the same impact that he had when he's playing five minute, ten minute stints. Uh, and I wonder at what point if there are injuries that Fitz will be uh, tempted to start him because yeah. he, he could start in a heartbeat. Oh, 100%. It's just a different sort of impact. It's obviously still... a bit more intensity when you start in the match, but yeah, and you, I think you, he can handle it. That's you'll, not you'll a question. You'll lose the hard-hitting impact off the bench. Yeah. But, he, yeah, he's still... His shape doesn't change. He's the same guy, you <laughs> know. So. Yeah, he's got such a unique body shape for a big prop. I'd like... be tempted at some point if we needed him to, to start. Over some other guys. I, I really would. You're in with Fitzy now. You get in his ear. We were hanging out <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> he was at Taylor Swift with me. How good. Fitz uh, as, a, as a rock man. Loves it. Yeah. Boy, I had to squeeze that one out of him in the interview. He throws on the headphones on the bus every time we're going anywhere and pumps it. I think I had to edit that interview a little bit. He was like, come on, Fitz, give me something. Surely. But most, most of the guys, or some of the guys are a bit hesitant when I ask that. And I always give him a bit of warning. Oh, she about music. Yeah, no worries. They've been thinking about it for too long, probably. What do you like? Oh, I like everything. It's always the everything, isn't it? I, I listen to a bit of everything. I know, I know. We all do. <laughs> How is the club looking, Gary, uh, behind the scenes? What's going on uh, that you can tell us? We've got a big clash in round two against the Bulldogs of Friday night. Yeah, obviously the majority of staff are focused on that. That's probably the biggest start to our season, not yeah. round one in New Zealand for admin staff. So just trying to get the stadium up to scratch and everything that we need for entertainment and food and all that, mm. getting that sorted over the last couple of weeks before that round. So Entertainment, you say? Entertainment, look out. I would walk 500 Dylan, miles. <laughs> Dylan Wright, done. He'll do it for Lock free. Lock him in. He's going to hate me saying that. No. He's... Um, He'll pay you. A superstar. <laughs> He'll pay me. I am going to talk about the fact, and it won't get you in any trouble, because it's, a pub, it's public knowledge now. Here we go. The Sharks are opening a merch store. We know this, Gary, because it's been advertised in certain areas by Adam Barnes. 
in on a public domain. Okay. You can talk about it. Yes. <laughs> You're not allowed to talk about it. No, I'm allowed to talk about it. I'm assuming that's in the new uh, precinct. Yes. Yes. It will and be. I think it'll be opening <clears throat> around April. I have no idea. You know more than me on this one. Okay. But yeah, that would sound about right. So There's obviously a lot of work to do to get the shop up to scratch and get the fit out happening yeah. and stock in there and everything like that. Yeah. And but that's good news. And it, that may change once the club is ready. It may not, of course. But it looks like, from everything I can see from the internet, that we're going to have a, a merch store yes. in the area. Very exciting. Great. Very exciting. It's, it's been a, a must, while really. since we've had something like that. So Yeah, it's a must. To have it close to the club and close to the stadium, it will be unreal. What else can you tell me? I've seen our friend Ash, the historian, putting nice stories on the website about days gone by, which we all yes, love, and yes. he seems to be doing a good job there. Yeah, so him and Troy are working together to get some good editorial stories out, and yeah, they're really good little focus on what's been happening throughout the years at the club and over, on and off the field. and History lessons, it's I like good, it. good little, um, yeah, history lesson, as you said. So. Yeah, we're quite lucky as a club that so many people care about what's going on, but also what went on. Yes. There are people not willing to sort of let it go, which is... <laughs> and Ash is a perfect example. It's amazing. It's like, I'm sure every club would like one of those. I'm sure every club has Everyone one. Everyone would have one for sure, but... But probably not to that level. To be involved the way that Ash is, it's probably mm. not the same across every of NRL club. We're marching into New Zealand round one. I, I tell you this, the Warriors look really good. <laughs> they do look really good. You know, they've obviously had a few changes with their squad but overall they're looking like the same Warriors of last year that are going to be quite difficult for a few teams to manage and handle and you know we've got to be that first team that steps up and gets the chockies over them so I think we can do the job I'm interested to see as we've mentioned before who gets named for that round and who's playing where but I think once we get over there and soak up the atmosphere a little bit and get into it and realize it's round one we'll we'll hit our straps and come away with the win yeah and we all know we don't have a great round one record I think Fitz has improved it a little bit, but historically, last well, you know, 10, 15 years, and we'll bring out the stat for you later, I'm sure, but it's <laughs> no, not been good. It so, so I want them, I really would love them to fire um, straight up and, and get some wins under the belt, particularly round one, because round two is very doable at home against the yep. Bulldogs. And it's quite a big trip, New Zealand. Like, you get over there early, you spend a bit of time acclimatizing, training over there, and yeah. then you fly back straight away and you're back into it. So to get it out of the way early, I think, is a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just get there, get the win. If we don't, move on, park it. It won't be as cold and wet as it usually yep. is later in the year. As you say, it's it's a little bit more even round one because it's round one. You know, anything can happen yep. both ways, of course. 100%. But you'd rather get RTS now, who looked really good in the trials, as opposed to like in round 15 when he's just like shredding. Yeah. I'd yeah. rather that. Exactly. Uh, but we do need to start well. It's going to be fascinating, Toby Rudolph. I, I really like him off the bench. And I don't know if his injury is related to that or not. It might just be a new role. As Pepe the cat just goes nuts. <laughs> but uh, I thought for a guy with a pretty bung toe, he's, he's had some good trial form. I mean, he looks yeah. like all of them a little bit. Getting used to it all again. Match but, fitness is totally different to all the fitness you're running yeah. throughout the preseason. So I, I do like the role, though, that he plays. Yeah, and I think it suits him. I think he's an impact player. He has yeah. those short stints where yeah. he's really, really solid. I, I think he, we got away from that a little bit over the years because that's how he was introduced to us. Yeah. And we were like, wow, this guy's so you know, impactful and, and powerful. And then he became like starting prop. And he was still good, but it was almost that more kind of like mechanical, this is my job. Yeah, yeah. I get off after this time. Agree. And, whereas 20, 30 minutes in, it's just a bit more loose and you can just go nuts. And yeah. he looks to have that roll down, at least to start the season. Maybe when his toe's better, if it ever is better, hope, hopefully it is for his sake and our sake, but maybe that roll changes. Maybe, maybe he starts round one. We don't know, but I do like him off the bench. Yeah, I think a lot of... You know, the game management thing pre-season is not to spend too much time running on his toe or doing too much like that. So, yeah, to limit his minutes and make sure he's fit and ready for round one. It'll be interesting to see if they do put him on the bench because I agree with you, Sam. I think he's the one to come off and make a big impact. We don't have a guy like a Siffer who used to come on and just bump people out of the way, which he still does now out in the centres. But, yeah, yeah, I think he, he's got a lot of impact to bring and... Bringing guys like him and Tom Hazelton on at the same time, a yeah, good little combo. Absolutely. 
Uh, going to be cool to see Fanua Blake play as well yes. with our eyes on him more than they ever have been. Obviously, we hope he doesn't have too good a game. Hope he stays yeah. injury free. Yeah, the whole year we'll be watching him pretty closely, I'm yeah. sure. And Fanua Blake, watch. It's always stressful when you're watching guys who've signed for you play for a whole year. It's, it's absolutely just, ridiculous. We'll see how we are in a few weeks. <laughs> but I would imagine there's extra incentive for him to play against his new club and also for us to. I'm sure some of our forwards are, you know, waiting for him oh, and give him a friendly welcome. So absolutely, th- that part of it is kind of cool to watch for us. But make no mistake, he's a remarkable prop, and and he we're gonna have to be on him. He can offload, he can do it all. He's and coming. you know what? That's probably part of the reason why guys like Oregon and Royce have come back in such good nick because they know like they've yeah. got this world class prop that's coming, and he's locked down a spot. So that's the positive about getting a guy a year early. You know what's happening. Yeah. You know yeah. he's coming, and especially because he's one of the best in the world. He's starting in that jumper. Whatever jumper he wants, he gets. He'll, he'll pick it and he'll be like, Dumb. no coach, I want to be 10, not 8, <laughs> you know, whatever. And and that removes someone. So, yeah. Um, what what were your thoughts on uh, the re-signings? We've got fin- Braden Hamill Newelli. Yep. I love that he's sticking around. Him and AFB, the two three-letter props, BHU and AFB. It's a yeah. it's a good good little uh, good little front row there. So, Jesse re-signed. Jesse mentioned. re-signed, which was cool. You were also saying that there's another signing coming up soon not allowed to say who it is yes but it's a someone who's a dominant player yes and he's had a good preseason we've probably seen a bit more of him in the trials than we would have last year he played a bit for the jets but yeah stay tuned to the sharks channels for that one now i'm going to assume and this won't get you in trouble that it's not jack williams and i believe if all my things are correct jack williams is off contract we need to somehow get that done for mm. me personally. He's been such everyone. a consistent performer. Like, yeah. obviously, people focused on a lot of his errors because they happened at wrong people time. But he's one of the most consistent and good forwards that we had last year. And mm. he needs to be there for me. He's in my 17 every week. Yeah. I'd be super surprised if we let him go for any other reason than we couldn't afford it. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know what the demand would be like for a guy like him on the market. I'm sure there'd be people interested. Mm. They'd have to be. Like, yeah. Look at the way he plays, I'm sure. Yeah. People within the know would know that he'd bring something to their side, and there's a few sides that could do with a guy like Jack Williams. So hopefully we can keep him, and I'm sure we're doing everything we can to to Abs- make sure that happens. But yeah. the great thing about our club currently, and we've seen a bunch of guys say it throughout the past few weeks, is they yeah. want to stick around. We hinted at the fact that we thought BHU would stick around because because he loves it and because he's on good money. Like I didn't know, but I just had a feeling he would turn down the Warriors offer. He, I've never seen a guy more settled. You know? Yeah, yeah, he is. So he's sticking around, and that really doubled down for me the fact that they all want to be here. And they've, I've seen a bunch of press this week where they, where guys, certain guys have said, "Look at that guy; he's sticking around because he wants to be here." And it's, yeah, it's, that's a great thing. And I think that with Jack Williams, or I'm hoping that'll be the case. Now it can't be the case for every guy. I'm going to get to the some guy, isn't like, it? Mate, we got three bucks for you. Will you stick around? And, uh, I can't stay for three bucks, but yeah, I really love the club. Yeah, exactly. So hopefully that's not the Jack Williams story. We'll see what happens there. But I think he's one of the last pieces of the puzzle. And if Fitz can, and Mooney can work that one out and make it all work, then essentially what you're doing is you're, you're saying, we like our pack. Yeah. Here's for Noah Blake. Yeah, which is the perfect addition in my eyes. It's Absolutely. just like he brings what we lack. And yeah. that's just a big dude, world-class prop that's got it all. Now, Gary, before we let you go, I want to let everyone know they can get in touch with us via the Gmail, sharkcastpod at gmail.com. You can DM us on Twitter, Instagram. X. X, Instagram. <laughs> I usually get that right. X, Instagram, and Facebook. X. <sighs> You're wrong and I'm going to kill you. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Sorry for saying it was a, a sunny day and not a, not a cloudy day. You can't say that to him. Uh, well, at Shark House Pod on the socials, we do have a TikTok account, <laughs> Gary. Yes. Don't, don't I love start. this. Can I please? Yeah, I'm going on. Now, I've only put two videos on. They've done really well. I don't know how to use it. So it'll be an ongoing process. I'm I know involved. I sound extremely old when I say that, but I really don't know what happens. <laughs> That's fine. You, you open up the app and just something blares out, no matter what it is. Like, Every time. <laughs> Every time. You've got to be careful oh. with those. <laughs> uh, so that's how you get in touch with us. And Sean has been in touch. Sean's a regular listener. We appreciate his listenership. Thank you, Sean. He said your pod for the trial was well received as ever. He also suggests if we ever do a Patreon, he would be in. And that's super nice to hear. We are considering all that stuff. We have been for a number of years. We haven't quite got there for a number of reasons. But when we do, 
Sean, we're looking forward to you joining up. I do thoroughly enjoy your little takes after games. They're um, great little review episodes. So Thank you, Gary. Please keep them up. You just might have to pay for it at some point. <laughs> okay. Sean says, the forwards had impact uh, moving through the line. Perhaps that was due to the Dogs' weaker defence, but I thought it was solid and promising. Uh, defence was solid again, scrambling and satisfying to see. Again, the Dogs didn't throw a lot at them, but it was a good sign. The attack wasn't great, but it was part of the trial that he thought was irrelevant. He wanted to see the effort areas of strong forwards with the impact and commitment to defence. Tick both boxes. Hmm. Uh, now we need those forwards bending the line, eliminating mistakes, and get the D on point. Attack will come as its first rate. It's a good point, actually. If ever you need to sort of focus on your defense in Sharks teams gone by, this era of the Sharks, they can score pretty much when they want. Defensively, we've seen them be a bit hot and cold. Yes. They're definitely warming up now, which is good. Yeah, we had some good scramble in that trial against the Dogs. You saw, obviously, Britt with a great try saver there, but yeah. got sent off after that. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, like that's the sort of effort areas that we need to see throughout the season. And to know that they're putting those in in a trial, it's exactly what you want to see. Uh, the comments of you and your guests were fantastic. Uh, gives hope uh, that we're in good hands with forward thinking and recruitment choices. That's in regards to Kieran and I talking about the new signings and the depth and the strategy behind the signings. You can hear that on the review episode yes. from last week. Uh, he also is critical of himself, Sean. He sent us an email and he was, Why? he was talking about a clean out of the team, but he sort of then went, it sounded harsh when you read it out, sheepishly retract that, <laughs> <laughs> which we'll allow. I'll allow yeah, that. I'll allow that. Absolutely. As well. He's owned up to his mistake and that's Sean, all we can ask. Uh, thanks for being in touch. Really uh, enjoyed communicating with you this week. Don't be a stranger and everyone. Yeah. Get in touch. Whenever you like, at Sharkcast Pod on the socials and sharkcastpod at gmail.com. We are going to look into some technology throughout the year about getting you guys to come on the show and have your thoughts. There will be no swearing. Yes. So you've got to hold it in. You just <laughs> We know you feel like it sometimes, but you can't. There will be a, a meltdown episode, I'm sure, and you're not allowed to swear. It's just yes. how it's going to be. And we will drum that into you when we get that happening, but... Gary Dover, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. We, we always like getting you on early in the year to let us know how the club's going and all that kind of thing. How's my mate Dino going? Yeah, good. He's off to Vegas, I think, today. Yes, so him and, and the great Steve Mace. Are I think Steve's already gone. Yeah. But um, yeah, Dino heads over today. So Gal and Wade are already over there and there's a few and things what's that happening. About? I don't know. <laughs> it must be, yeah, something? it could be a Triple M or some sort of promotion thing with Channel 9 or whatever it is, but... They're both over there. For those who like Instagrams with lots of travel in them, a travel Instagram, if you will, follow our chairman, Steve Mace. He's, yeah, he's got some great spots that he heads every he, week, for, just about. And he has good reason to do so. Absolutely. It's, not a, it's absolutely not, nothing but a compliment to him. And uh, we've been saying it for about a year, but I was in touch with him recently and he is keen to come on the show still. That was on me. We, we should do an international episode with our chairman. We should all go with Steve somewhere. That would be good. That would be unreal. Steve? I think he'd be able to cover the cost too. <laughs> and and Dino's good? Dino's good. Everyone's good. So. Dino in Vegas. Whoa. I know. He's um, heading over there. I think he leaves this afternoon actually. So okay. we'll see how he gets over there and what happens when he's there. But I'm sure he'll have a good time. And it's a good spectacle over there taking the game to the US market. And I better not be reading about him in the gossip papers. <laughs> yeah, surely not. What happens surely in Vegas? Not. All right. So we have the Warriors Friday week. And then Exciting. the We're Friday back. after that, we are at home, which Doggies. is, we want to pack out the places that sold Please. out yet. Not sure. I would assume not, but okay. I'm sure we'll get there. Get those GAs sold get out. Get in there while you can. Yes. Yes. It's it, going to be a good one. We go through this every year. I can't <laughs> get a ticket. Well, you can now. You can now. Right so now. Jump can, on. Ticket tech. Can, if you can muster up that within yourself, go do it. Gary, we will talk to you soon, no doubt. Thank you for your time. Thank Absolutely. you for your friendship. and Thank you for having me. I'm glad you enjoyed Tay-Tay. It was unreal. Whole family enjoyed it? Whole family enjoyed it. Yeah. Bonnie stayed up the whole time. Amazing. But Arlo fell asleep right at the end. But that's all right. I'll let that slide because he's only a little fella. But he enjoyed himself. Have your ears recovered? My ears? Mm. Sorry? Yeah. <laughs> it actually took me a whole day the next day, Saturday, to get most of my hearing back. There were moments there where I genuinely felt like my eardrums were about to burst. Yeah, I had one moment. I was wearing earplugs. When she came on, everyone went nuts. But see, that quickly faded because she was singing. 
I saw night four, it faded, but it was like in and out for a few songs. Yeah. Obviously, it's state-of-the-art mix and everything, but the volume, it wasn't like a rock and roll, heavy metal, loud show, the volume of music. It was just, it was good. Yeah. But the screams at times kind of drowned it out a little bit. 100%. And, and so, I, at the start, I was like, I don't know if I can do three hours of this. <laughs> Everyone just, as she would say, needs to calm down. It did get better, as you said, like both the people chilled a little, like a fraction, and the music kind of found itself, and you got used to it, you acclimatized. There were peaks and troughs, right? Like with all there's, her songs. There's and a bit people screaming. There's a bit though where she just sort of stands there, oh. and it turned into <laughs> mayhem. A few minutes for you and I. I think on the third night it was like four or five minutes, Far and out. that was when my ears were like, Ehh. "That was that was the exact bit that I'm talking about." And she just stands there smiling and taking it all in. Yeah, and, and, and it's it, awesome. It, it is unreal. Awesome. It but. is absolutely incredible. It's deserved. But the only thing I can equate it to is like you know, if I watch a Beatles documentary and you see everyone freaking out in the '60s and. It's that, exactly like, it. And you've heard stories about that kind of thing. Yeah. And, oh, I can't really hear the band. I've never experienced that in my life. That's the closest I've gotten to it. And for sure. Like, it was fun, but it was also just a bit like, oh, am I going to lose my hearing? Yeah, can we stop now, <laughs> please? <laughs> but no, it was great. Great show, great production. Really yeah. glad to be able to see it and experience it with the kids. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those things that, for me, if I never went to another concert of hers, yeah. I'd be like, oh, well, I've done that and it was amazing. But it's also like, oh no, I'd like to go see her again. Yeah, like there was, a, there was more than enough for me to go. Oh no, I'm in. Like she's got me. Yeah, sure. and I think having the nice cheap seats up the top there was great experience with the kids. But I'd love to be down there looking at the sets and yeah. seeing everything like that. So I think yeah, I'd, yeah. if the opportunity came up, I'm back there for sure. Yeah. Any of the team go that we know? Not that I know of. No. Oh, I don't know. They probably kept it under wraps if they didn't. Which is silly. I know. I had a few people laughing at me, but I loved it. It's ridiculous. I yeah, I, I knew a few ever. people. And I, you just got to call. Them, I'm like, what are you? What's the problem? <laughs> yeah, I've been listening it. to music for like 15 years. I had a good time. <laughs> yeah, I won't name names, but just there's been some people and nothing to do with shark cast. But <laughs> uh, I actually no, we had a shark cast group talk about it, but there was no ridiculing, which is unusual for that, <laughs> <laughs> that <chat laughs> those group of guys. <laughs> As you know, you're in the chat, but uh, I yeah, I did found it intriguing occasionally when when someone would be like, oh. I'm like, I'm going to see the biggest artist of our generation. Yeah, that, that's the exact reaction that I got a few times. Like, what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to tell him, what? What are you doing that for? Um, because it will be amazing. <laughs> and that's not to say people can't like it. We're, not, we're going off a tangent here. But yeah, the, the sort of anti-reaction, anti-hero reaction, that was a bit like, what? what I love all these ones you're throwing in throughout the episode. Travis Kelsey was there for my show. Was he, he there for you your got show? Him? No, he was in and out. Yeah, he was there for mine. Could you Big see him? scream when he walked in and then I saw him walk in like pretty far away. Yeah. But then he was at the back because we were obviously near the back where she came in and out. And yeah. He was waiting there for her after the show. So oh, okay. Like, yeah, it was cool. <clears throat> I was probably more excited to see him at the start, but after the show, I'm all, I'm all Tay-Tay. <laughs> I've never seen so many Kansas City jerseys in my life. Oh, ridiculous. I would say I saw hundreds of them. Oh, easily, easily. <laughs> And people you wouldn't expect wearing them, wearing them. I loved it. It's really good because even if they put on a game, they might not become Kansas fans or NFL fans, but they're aware of the team. They're aware of the guy. They're aware of Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. It's really good. It's awesome. It's so good for the sport. Imagine if that was a Cronulla Sharks. Imagine if that was Cleveland Browns for you, Minnesota Vikings for me. Like You'd be like, yeah, this is awesome. I know. I know. It's um, We've got to find someone like a, a Taylor Swift for Nico and then we'll be sorted. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get in a lot of trouble from the, ki- from the King of Carimbao for that. I love it. I love uh, it. Uh, not that he would have a problem with that. Just thinking, who's out there? He's really into country music. He is. He is. They all are, Everyone is at the moment. It yeah. seems to be making a bit of a... It's good. A it's revival. Really good. It's really um, good. It's, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, don't forget to get behind our man, Dylan Wright on Australian Idol. Yeah, Whatever that means. You don't have to watch the show. Give him a like on the socials uh, when he releases his own stuff later in the year. If he comes to a town near you... Just go and listen because you'll be a fan. Yeah, tell him we sent you, but uh, he's one of us. I can't he is. instill that enough. If you didn't listen to the show, and a whole bunch did, but if you didn't, go listen to it a couple episodes ago. I heard a few people sort of saying, "What are you getting a take or are you managing him? I'm like, no. <laughs> he's just really good at what he's, he does. And, and he we have a connection charts. from before. Yeah, awesome. Not best friends, but a connection. And we've been communicating a lot in the last sort of month and and he's one of us. Mm, like, that's the best way to put it. Well, what else do you want? <laughs> There's nothing more This to guy, <laughs> when, when your place of employment posted about him the other day, 
couple of weeks too late. Uh, what? Excuse me? <laughs> he freaked out. I've never seen a person more happy. That's awesome. Except for when love we it. gave him a shout out. But get behind him. Absolutely. Gary, thanks for your time, brother. Thank you. Stay cool. See you soon. Up, up. Up, up. Have a good night, Gary. Get back to Colonel safe. It's a long drive. Kieran. <laughs> Sharkcast is supported by the best and most honest real estate agent in the Sutherland Shire, Jason Hawes from Crips and Crips Real Estate. He's an expert in the Curringbarra region and has his eye all across the Shire. Lifelong Sharks fan and supporter of this podcast, if you're looking to buy or sell in the region, the person you need to be talking to is Jason Hawes from Crips and Crips Real Estate. Call him on 0410 417 450. That's 0410-417-450. Jason Hawes, Crips and Crips Real Estate. And to all you people back in the Shire, turn your porch lights off because we're coming over with a trophy. 